Beneath the turquoise waters of the Red Sea, Eritrea faces a question that could shape its destiny. Does it possess untapped oil and gas reserves? For decades, theories have hinted at hidden energy wealth, yet the drills remain silent and the coastline unexplored. Eritrea's story is not one of discovery, but of missed opportunities and persistent uncertainty. The journey from potential to production is fraught with political and economic challenges, ones Eritrea has yet to confront. While oil tankers pass by daily, Eritrea itself has never produced a single commercial barrel. The reasons are complex, rooted in the nation's history, politics, and global relationships. This video explores why experts believe oil and gas might exist here, the barriers to exploration, and what the future could hold. Eritrea's energy story is about more than geology. It's about whether buried potential ever sees the light of day. Eritrea's long Red Sea coastline sits on one of the world's busiest maritime trade routes, connecting the Mediterranean to the Indian Ocean. This geography grants Eritrea strategic importance, but also exposes it to regional competition and instability. The Red Sea is a young ocean where tectonic plates are pulling apart creating deep rift basins, prime conditions for oil and gas formation. Eritrea's offshore territory, including the Dalek archipelago, lies within this active rift zone. The fundamental ingredients for hydrocarbons, a rift basin, potential source rocks and geological traps are all theoretically present. This keeps the hope of Eritrean oil alive, even without discoveries. Eritrea is, geologically, in the right neighborhood but being in the right place is only the beginning. Eritrea has no proven oil or gas reserves, only geological potential based on regional trends and sparse, outdated data. The last real exploration happened decades ago with a few dry wells and minor gas shows cut short by war. Since independence, there's been virtually no modern exploration. Eritrea's rift basin structure with its horsts, grebens, and possible salt seals fits the textbook model for oil systems. But without new seismic data and drilling, it's all theory. Today, energy companies use advanced imaging before drilling, but Eritrea's offshore remains a blank slate. No one knows what truly lies beneath. Until someone invests in exploration, Eritrea's oil potential remains an unanswered question. Optimism about Eritrea's oil prospects comes from looking north to Egypt's Gulf of Suez, a prolific oil province formed by the same rift system. The Gulf of Suez's geology, source rocks, reservoirs and salt seals mirrors what might exist off Eritrea. If these conditions extend south, Eritrea could share in the region's oil wealth. But geology is unpredictable. Small differences can mean the difference between a giant field and a dry hole. The Gulf of Suez offers a powerful analog, but not a guarantee. Without drilling, the questions remain open. The comparison gives reason to look, but not certainty of what will be found. Hope, not proof, drives the interest. If the geology is promising, why hasn't exploration happened? The answer lies in above-ground risk. Eritrea's political isolation, single-party rule, and lack of transparency have deterred major oil companies. Years of UN sanctions and regional instability further discouraged investment. The country lacks the infrastructure needed for offshore exploration, deep water ports, supply bases, and skilled workers. Companies prefer countries with established infrastructure and clear legal frameworks. Eritrea's opaque governance and unpredictable fiscal terms make investment risky. High political risk, insecurity, and unclear rules push Eritrea to the bottom of the list for global exploration. The silence of the drills is about risk, not rocks. Even if oil is found, it's no guarantee of prosperity. Many nations have suffered the resource curse. Oil wealth can distort economies, fuel corruption, and deepen inequality, as seen in Nigeria and Angola. Sudden riches can undermine other sectors and make countries vulnerable to price swings. The difference between success and failure is governance. Norway avoided the curse through strong institutions and transparent management. For Eritrea, 
The real challenge would be building these foundations before any oil money arrives. Without them, oil could become a curse, not a blessing. Managing resources wisely is harder than finding them. A major oil discovery would transform Eritrea's geopolitical standing overnight. Global powers and energy companies would compete for influence, pulling Eritrea into new alliances. Oil would give Eritrea economic clout, shifting its relationships with neighbors and major powers. Regionally, a wealthy Eritrea could alter the balance of power, especially with Ethiopia. New wealth could foster cooperation or fuel new tensions. But with oil comes scrutiny and the risk of entanglement in global rivalries, especially between the US and China. The Red Sea is already crowded with foreign interests. Oil would raise the stakes. Eritrea could gain leverage, but also face new pressures and risks. The price of oil brings both opportunity and danger. Eritrea's energy future could unfold in three ways. In the best case, transparent laws and good governance attract investment, leading to responsible development and broad prosperity. More likely, a modest discovery brings limited benefits, with revenues absorbed by the state and little change for most citizens. Or, nothing changes, above-ground risks keep investors away, and Eritrea's oil remains a theory as the world moves on. The real challenge isn't geology, but policy and vision. Finding oil is luck and science. Managing it is about leadership. Eritrea's choices will determine whether its energy dream becomes reality, a cautionary tale, or a forgotten footnote. The world is watching, but the next move is Eritrea's.